you've been asked by Mark at Cerberus K9 UK to do a couple of how-to videos. So I thought I'd start with one on marker training, or as more commonly known, clicker training. Hello, my name's Dave, and I'm going to teach you a bit about clicker training. In its most simple terms, it's just using a sound to tell the dog that it's doing something right. But if that's all it is, then you're not going to get the best from clicker training. In this short video, I'll try and explain how I use marker training to teach dogs new exercises. Clickers are just normally plastic contraptions, uh, a box with a metal thing inside that makes a distinctive sound. They come in all sorts of colours, shapes, uh, some you hand around your neck, others you would stick on your finger, some you get attached to your wrist, but in essence they're all plastic boxes that go click. There are two simple rules when using the clicker. Rule number one, don't use the clicker to get the dog's attention. Do not use the clicker to get the dog's attention. And rule number two, every time you click, the dog gets a reward. If you click accidentally, the dog gets a reward. If you click for the wrong behavior, the dog gets the reward. So don't use the clicker to get the dog's attention. If you click, the dog gets a reward. Rewards. A reward is something that the dog really, really wants. Something the dog really, really enjoys. It can be absolutely anything, but it's got to be something the dog really enjoys. Not something that you enjoy doing, something that you think the dog may enjoy more, but something the dog actually likes doing. It can be absolutely anything, but for the purpose of this video, we're going to look at food rewards. The food reward has to be of a high value to the dog. The dog must really, really like it. As well as the dog really, really liking it, it has to have a few more attributes. Firstly, it needs to be moist. If it is dry, as in something like kibble or commercial dog treats, which often tend to be very, very dry, after several repetitions, it will get stuck in the dog's throat. That will distract the dog from the training. The more you use a dry training treat, the less the dog desires it. So you need something the dog is going to desire, want to get long term. And for this, it needs to be moist. As well as being moist, it has to be of a suitable size so that the dog actually wants to get it. Having it too small, the dog will very quickly lose interest. I find a cube about the size of your thumbnail is about the right size for most dogs. As well as being um, the right size for the dog, it can be too small, it becomes too fiddly to handle, it can be too big so once you give it the dog it can take ages to chew it and eat it. You want it to eat it and enjoy it in a relatively short space of time. The best treats I find are cubes of cheese or cubes of hot dog. Both are the moist most dogs seem to like them, um, and the cheap and effective training aids. When you're using cheese or meats, you should try to avoid grated cheese or shredded meats because they tend to fall over the floor and the dog becomes distract distracted while it's just grubbing about on the floor. So the thing we need to do now is couple the sound, the click, to the treat that the dog really really likes. This is sometimes called charging the clicker. It's actually a process called classical conditioning um, and there are certain rules that you need to follow while carrying out classical conditioning for it to be most effective. Not to get too deep into the theory in this video but classical conditioning is basically a process whereby an animal learns to pair a biologically potent stimulus with a previously neutral stimulus. Through this pairing, the neutral stimulus elicits the same response as the potent stimulus. 
So the food, a biological potent stimulus, um, becomes paired with the previously neutral stimulus, which is the click. So the click elicits the same physiological response as the dog receiving the treat. So not only do we want this click to predict that the treat will be on its way, we need it to elicit the same response as if it had received the treat at the time it hears the click. This becomes a conditioned response. It enables us to bridge the time between the dog carrying out the action and receiving the reward for doing the action. For the classical conditioning to be most effective, two things really need to happen. One, the click needs to remain fairly constant. So swapping clickers isn't ideal. If you use your voice like I do, I use the sound yes. When saying the sound yes, you should try and make it as similar as you can every time. But rule number one, try and use, try and stick to the same sound. Rule number two is there needs to be a gap between the click and the treat. There needs to be a gap of about a second. Doing the click and treat simultaneously is ineffective. Click and waiting too long is ineffective. There needs to be click, treat, a gap of about a second. If you say in your head, click means treat. Click means treat and it's at that sort of speed there's no rush click means treat gap of about a second enables classical conditioning to take place much better more effective than click treat or click treat click means treat so now it's time Put all these ideas into practice and go and get a dog out. While charging the clicker, it doesn't really matter what the dog is doing. The important thing is that he's engaged with the trainer and enthusiastic in his attitude towards the training. After about 20 repetitions, the clicker can set to be charged. A reminder that there is no rush. The click and treat must not be simultaneous. There needs to be a gap. The click must predict the treat arriving. The attitude that the dog adopts during its early training tells me the attitude it carries with it throughout its life. If you can instill a positive, proactive approach from the dog rather than a passive, reluctant one, then training will be easy. I use the technique called luring to get the dog to perform the required behaviours. I use both hands for luring and the reward is given by either of them. This principle is demonstrated in another video and it is worth watching if you're not sure how to do it. I don't use a clicker for this element, rather I use a conditioned vocal marker, yes. You can use a clicker or your voice as a marker, but for this part of the training, as the reward is given as the behaviour is occurring, no marking is necessary. Once the behaviours can be lured reliably, then the next step is to mark these behaviours so that the dog knows exactly what it is doing to get the treat. The click must now not only mark the behaviour, it must end the behaviour. The dog has to understand what it needs to do and for how long in order to get the treat. 
Initially, the click comes as soon as the behavior is carried out. Gradually, the click is delayed as the position is stabilized. Only for a few seconds though at the moment. Notice how after clicking to end the behavior, I move the treat away from the dog fairly quickly. This causes the dog to end the behavior and actively re-engage in the process of treat getting. This is far more beneficial than the dog just staying there and having treats given to him. Once the positions have become predictable by the process of learning and marking them, then the next phase is to name them. The sequence for teaching the dog these names is to say the word, for example, sit, lure the dog, mark the position, release and reward the dog. Occasionally, in the early stages, okay. the dog will offer other behaviours other than those requested. This is normal. The dog may go through its whole repertoire of various behaviours and positions Down. in order to gain the treat. If this happens, just ignore it. Move on to the behaviour you want, Come. give its name, lure the dog, mark the position, release and reward. Down. 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 